In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create this YouTube video thumbnail uh, in Photoshop. And the idea is we want to get someone, cut them out, get them on a nice, bright, colorful background we source elsewhere, and create that box text effect next to them that uh, is pretty popular these days. So let's get started. Now, we're in Photoshop and we're going to create a new document. I'm going to go to File and to New. Once there, I actually want to create a file. A a file that is 1920 by 1080 pixels tall so width and height quick create so I've got my basic uh, sort of frame here now I've got some images off to the side here which I'm going to copy from pexels.com and I'm going to paste the first one in here so I'm going to copy and paste and so I've got this image I'm going to rotate it it's not necessarily the color I want, but we're going to adjust that in a little bit. I'm just going to position it the way we want. And what I've actually done when I've pasted that in is I've just used these handles here to, to resize. And I can also sit on the outside and rotate if I want to. By holding down shift, I can get harsher angles. So I can get it exactly 90 degrees. And I've positioned that and I've enlarged it and I'm going to hit enter. It's not the greatest image, but it does the trick. But now I've also got a photo of someone we're going to pop to the left. So I've copied that one. Once again, this image is from pexels.com. And I've pasted him in there. And I'm going to edit, free transform, or control T slash command T, and just position him the way I want him to be on the thumbnail. So over here. So we've got our two initial elements to get started. Now I do recommend if you're using a photo of yourself or a photo of someone else, get something with a nice plain background so it's easier to cut out because what we're going to do is we're going to go to select and subject and you see we've selected our subject now be aware if I just back step a little bit on your layers panel down here if you can't see the layers panel head up to window and go down to layers to turn that on if I head down to our layers panel and select you can see the man here I've got the correct layer selected I then go to select subject and it creates a selection of the subject. And what I want to do from there is once again, I want to make sure this layer is selected. I'm going to mask it by clicking this square box with a circle in it. And now our image is cut out. However, if you're not quite sure or not quite happy with the results that you've gotten, so maybe we want to remove some of the white around this beard, I can make sure this layer is selected, but select on the mask next to it. You can see how the frame moves from one square to the other with the frame over the black and white. I get my brush tool, choose the color black, and at the moment I can see my brush is pretty big, so I'm going to adjust that and take it down to what a size I think is suitable. Make sure that the hardness is up because I want a nice hard edge, and then I can just go through and make that adjustment on the mask to remove any unwanted areas. Or I can flip to white if I want to reintroduce any areas like that. So white will show what's on the image, black will remove. And that's how you can adjust and, and edit that layer. And if you want to, you can also just disable or delete the layer mask to bring back the full image. So I'll just zoom out. But I want to keep that there. So I'm actually going to go to edit and undo to keep that mask in place. So I'm actually using the I'm using the keyboard shortcut key Z to zoom in and out there, holding down Alt to zoom out. But you can click on the magnifying glass down here to zoom in and go up the top here to zoom out as well. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little drop shadow behind him. I can actually see the lights coming from the right because there's a bit of shadow on his left. So I'm going to I'm going to either right click and go to blending options. Or on that layer, I'm going to double click in the blank space to bring up the blending options panel. Now, I go down to drop shadow here on the left and tick that. I make sure I press the panel so it's highlighted. And you can see we've got a drop shadow all around him, which is a little aggressive. So what I'm going to do on the settings over here, I'm just going to bring the spread and the size down. I've got this angle. I want the shadow to appear on the left side. So I want the angle of light to come from the right. So I move this dial to there so the light's coming from the right upper hand side. And then I can adjust this distance to get that shadow like that. Now this contour I've set up here, you can also change that if you want to change how the shadow works, but the initial shadow contour is going to work out pretty good in most aspects. 
And at the moment, the shadow is a bit harsh. I'm going to blur it a bit again, reduce the spread. I'm just going to take the opacity down a bit. So we've got a nice shadow that way. So the next, next thing we have is the background, which I think is a little bit harsh and a bit too sort of rough. We can keep it like that, but I'm actually going to soften it a little bit. So I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. And we can adjust how much we want to sort of blur that background and click OK. So the next thing we want to do is adjust the color of that background. But I don't want to sort of what they call, I want to do a destructive changes, which means if I actually go in and edit this layer, if I want to revert back to the original, it's more difficult. So I'm actually going to right click on this background layer, layer one, and convert to smart object. And now when I apply filters and adjustments to it, I can actually turn them on or off. So I'm going to go up here to image and adjustments, and I'm just going to go to hue and saturation. So now if I move this off here so we can see what we're looking at, I can just adjust the hue to change the color to something I like, maybe the green or this blue, or I can actually click colorize and get one solid uniform color and move that slider back and forth. I can make it brighter by cranking up the saturation or bringing it down to make it grayscale. And I can also make it darker or lighter. And you'll see if I apply this and click OK, I have a smart filter down here and I can turn it off and turn it on by clicking the little eye symbol. I'm going to double click over here and, sorry, cancel. I'm going to double click on hue saturation to bring that up again. And I'm just going to get rid of colorize and we're just going to change the color along here to get a nice sort of green texture. We might just pop the saturation up a little bit, and the darkness down. And so now we have this nice bright background on our image. So what I'm going to do now is the bright image should stand out pretty well, but I do want to flatten it a little bit still. So I'm actually going to just double click on the layer again. I'm going to go to color overlay and Tick that, select color overlay, and where it has this little color here, I'm going to choose just like a green, a nice bright green. I'm going to make it just normal. So the blend mode is going to be normal, but I don't want it to be full strength. I'm just going to bring it down. So instead of having these ups and downs, I'm just going to do this and flatten that out a little bit. So now I have this bright green looking color. It might not be the most attractive thumbnail, but you get the idea. Now we're going to start adding our text boxes in, uh, our text, I should say, and our text boxes in. So I'm going to click up, to the top layer and then I'm going to just I want to click the top layer because I want the text to be above everything else so I'm going to get the T little symbol here for the text tool and click that so I'm going to say how I and click enter so I've typed the first line in here and I want to make sure I get the font right early otherwise I've got to sort of repeat the steps which is not a big deal but yeah it can help so I'm going to choose a font like Oswald which is nice, tall, and thin. And that's going to be how I use that particular line of text. And then I'm just going to click on the layout in here, drag it to the plus symbol to create a copy. So now if I hold down Control or Command, I can click on the text and move it. Or I can just simply go to Control or Command T, or I can click Free Transform to make it bigger, move it down, hit Enter. And then I've got my next line of text I can add in my, so you know, how I earned, make this all capitals. Once again, drag, hit control or command T, move that down, and I type in six figures or something like that. So we've got our text in place there, and I'm going to just hold down shift and select all three. And then I can hit Control Command T again just to get things where I want them here. I want that text to be slightly over the top. And now we're going to start getting things looking the way we want. The first thing we're going to do, I'm going to take the six figures and I'm going to actually just go to the layer beneath that, that text because I want the box I'm creating to show up underneath. I'm going to go over here and there's, I've actually got the circle tool. If I hold that down, you'll get the rectangle tool. So if you see any of these other tools in here, such as triangle, polygon, you should be able to see the rectangle tool there and draw that box just in place like that. At the moment, it's defaulted to white, but up the top here in this settings panel, it has a fill and a stroke. 
on the stroke, I'm going to choose none by clicking this white with a red line on it. But under the fill, I'm going to choose uh, like a dark green like that. So now we have our box. But for some reason, the six figures text isn't showing up over the top of it. So now I've moved, because, <laughs> okay, one little mistake I made there, I've actually put the rectangle under six figures instead of under how I've got the, the order in reverse. So pay attention to what text you're using. That's a little stuff up from me. And what I'm gonna do, I'm going to hold down shift on both of these and group. So now I have this one singular group. If I actually hit control T or command T, I can move the whole group. And now I can even rotate this if I want to. But I'm just gonna hit escape and not gonna worry about that right now. And I'm going to expand this group and select this rectangle. I'm going to drag down to the plus symbol to duplicate it. And I'm going to move another rectangle underneath earned and then change the fill to black. And then I can actually hit control or command T again, move this down and adjust. Now, if you get this where the whole box changes, you only want to make it longer, hold down shift and you can actually change the proportion. I'm going to make this a bit bigger like that. And we're going to repeat that. So we're going to duplicate this again, move it up under six figures. And maybe we make the fill this time slightly lighter. So I'm going to go to this color palette here or one of these color palettes. Click on this here, sorry, over in the top right hand corner and just go for like a dark gray. Okay. And then I'm going to actually hit control T again and move that hold down shift and now we have all of our text in boxes ready to be played with so if I look here now where it says group one I'm just going to put here how I and then I'm going to take the rectangle where it says earned I'm going to actually hit this group folder again or hit control G to group which I did mention earlier control G to group or hit the folder button and I right click on that folder so double click on the folder name so double clicking on the text I type in earned. I do the same again. Shift select both of these, hit folder, and double click six figures. So now if I collapse by hitting a little arrow, if I collapse these folders, all I need to do now with the how I, I'm going to move that to the top above the others. I'm going to hit control or command T, and now I'm going to just rotate that a little bit to get this sort of rotated effect. I'm going to take the same thing with six figures, hit control T and I'm going to actually rotate that a little bit as well. I might even just resize it just to get this effect. So now I've got this cool little sort of split rotated effect on my text and I'm actually seeing all the space here I can use. I still want to keep a bit of space around these but I'm going to hold down shift, select all of the folders, hit control command T and just enlarge a little bit. So for some reason it hasn't selected the fonts because I have this I'm not sure what's going on there control T so we are having some issues for some reason moving one of those rectangles so I'm just going to leave it there what we can do instead is select these individually and just resize them individually so six figures For some reason, selecting them all doesn't want to work, but that's okay. Control T, move up. How I, Control T, and maybe I want to center that, which means maybe I want to center the six figures, so Control T again. So that's pretty good. I can make some adjustments. I can grab our man down here on the layers panel, and I can just hold Control T and move him over as well. So we've got a pretty decent looking uh, effect here. But I want to add a drop shadow to all of these, but not to the point where they're shadowing over the other bits of text. So once again, I'm going to hold, I'm going to collapse the folders. I'm going to actually select all and hold down shift, select all three folders. And then I'm actually going to group that folder again. So all of the folders are within the one folder. I double click in the blank space and add a drop shadow. You can see we now have a drop shadow behind all three boxes. And I've got the same light direction as here. If I want to change that, I have to make sure use global light is unticked and I can move that around. I can change the size and the blur here. And 
get that looking the way I want. So that's essentially how we've created our uh, image. So pretty straightforward, pretty easy. It's a simple effect and you can use a bit of creativity with it. But uh, hopefully that helps you sort of understand ways you can create basic effects using Photoshop. And of course, the more you learn about Photoshop, the more easily you'll be able to come up with the ideas and methods to create these effects and um, get the look that you're after. So if you want to save this, head to File, Export, and then Save for Web Legacy. Choose the JPEG setting, around 50 to 60 is pretty good, and the file size. So three to 400 kilobytes isn't too bad, but the smaller the better. Save your image, and then go from there. So that's basically it. Now you can upload your image to YouTube and use it as a thumbnail. So I hope you found that little video guide useful. Um, this is not the best design in the world, but it gives you an idea of how it all works. So um, yeah, if you have any questions or any thoughts or sort of styles you'd like to see, leave a comment below and we'll check that out in the future. Otherwise, have a great day. Don't forget to check out our free, uh, we've got six free YouTube video thumbnails you can download. So don't forget to check those out on the website. Link to those is in the description below. Otherwise, have a great day and I hope to see you again soon.